Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about lookup tables, what they are, how they work, and how you can use them to make your code faster and maybe even easier to understand. What's up folks, welcome back. Today I wanna to talk about a topic that is super useful for making your code faster, cleaner, smaller, sometimes easier to read and maintain. And it's a topic that's right there in front of us, but a lot of new programmers don't see it and they miss it. And that topic is lookup tables. So this video of course will include code and as always, code is available through Patreon. Thank you all who support this channel in so many ways. But now let's talk about lookup tables or LUTs as we sometimes call them. And we can think about lookup tables as a data structure on their own, but really a lookup table is just an array. But what makes it a lookup table is how it's used. Specifically, an array is a lookup table if we are one, using a key or value to index directly into the array. So we're not going through the array item by item. We're going to look directly at the position that we want. And two, we're usually using it as a replacement for computation. So we're taking some computation, active computation that we would be doing in our program, and we're replacing it with a lookup in a table. And after you've seen this video, you're gonna to start to see lookup tables all over the place in code that you see. Of course, I can't hit on all the different examples. So if I miss your favorite example of how to use a lookup table, make sure to mention it down in the description. But now let's jump into the code and look at a really simple example. So this is a super simple and incomplete program here, but I just wanted to capture a fairly common programming task. And that is when you have some number, some value, it could be an error code, it could be a number of people in this case, and you have a function that's, that's gonna try to print out a message or do something in response to that number, right? So in this case, I have a print party size info function. It's taking a number of people and then I'm gonna print out some message in response to the number of people, depending on what the number is. Now, when new programmers see this, the initial response is often to say, hey, I can use if statements here. And they start doing stuff like this. So they start saying, if people equals zero, then we're going to print out something like not a party, you are alone, right? So you print something out like that, and then they're like, oh, well, but what if it's not zero? What if I have, okay, so then they add an else if, and let's come in here and say people equals one. So in this one, then you're just like, it's still not a, well, let's say something different. Okay, but the point is, is each time through here, I am going to do something different and I'm gonna print out a different message each time. So with two, we're gonna say not lonely, but not a party. And then let's say with three, actually let's let's mix it up a little and say, if it's less than or equal to four, now we're talking, okay. And then if we have up to seven, then it's really getting fun. And of course these numbers are completely arbitrary. And then if we end up down here, let's just have some else at the end that catches everything. Let's say, whoa, fire. Okay, so we violated our fire code. Great. Okay, so this is really straightforward. And if we come down here, if we save it and we can compile it using a make file. If you haven't seen make files before, check out my other videos. But this one's pretty straightforward, really nothing fancy here. But so if we come down here and we run our program. Remember my main just basically passes a bunch of different numbers in and we just get different messages. So you can see that, we, that we're getting these messages out. It seems like it's working just fine. But I don't like like this approach for a few reasons. Okay, the first is it's kind of ugly. And some of you are also probably out there saying, why do you use if else's? Why don't you use switch statements? And yeah, we could, we could get rid of all of these else, else ifs with switch statements, but that would also introduce a lot of breaks or returns and it's still gonna be long and kind of ugly. Now, the second problem is, and this sort of comes from it being ugly, is that updating this code is going to be error prone. It's gonna be a pain. I'm gonna have to add extra logic, extra computation into this if I wanna change how this flows, if I wanna change some of these messages or the numbers at which these messages are printed out. Plus I've got a bunch of magic numbers in here and that's not particularly nice either. And the last problem of course, is that there is a lot of computation going on here. So I'm doing a lot of comparisons. In fact, here, 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 here. In fact, this whole thing is a bunch of comparisons. And then this is also gonna produce a lot of jumps. We're gonna have this control flow that's jumping around depending on what we're seeing. And this is gonna be slow. We could make this a lot faster. So let's look at how we could use a lookup table to improve the situation. Now, simply my lookup table, I'm gonna put it up here, 
is simply going to be an array of messages. So these are going to be character pointers, call this messages, and then let's just define our messages here. Okay, and what I'm going to do, let's just take Let's just take my messages from down here. We'll add them up here, just corresponding to the different locations. So now I'm going to use the array index to find the message. And so we're just going to basically add these to the corresponding index. And we'll leave off the slash n because we'll add that later on. OK, let's add now we're talking. Now there's two of those because that we wanted that for three and four. And then, oh yeah, I was gonna come for the next, let's see, up to seven. So that's five, six, and seven. And then at the end, let's also add our, whoa, we violated fire code. Okay, so these are our messages. Now, just to make sure that everyone's following along, the point of what I'm doing here, you notice that I've got some duplicates. The point of what I'm doing here is I'm going to use the people number to be the index into my array. So position zero, meaning zero people, is going to map to this not a party, you are alone message. And one person is gonna to map to this, two is gonna to map to this, three and four are both gonna to map to the same message here, and five, six, and seven are going to map here. And then after this, at some point, we just say you can't have this many people. And so this, and this could be, of course, any error message that we wanted. Okay, now we're also gonna to wanna to keep track of how many messages we have. I could just count up these messages and make this a pound of fine up above or a const int. We are going to use a const int and let's call it num messages. But I want the compiler to give me a hand here. And so let's just do that because this information is all available. So we're going to get the size of the messages divided by the size of each message, which is a character pointer. And so what this will do is basically just give me the number of messages in my array. Uh, it's just a quick trick if any of you are wondering how you would do this. That way I only have to update the array and it just updates num messages automatically. So that's nice. Now, once we have this array, we have this lookup table. Now let's go down and actually try to fix our function here. Okay, so really what I'm gonna do is just remove all this code. Now, if I knew that people were only gonna pass in valid numbers of people, then this function actually gets really simple. All it looks like is this. We're gonna print out a string with a slash n, and the thing we're gonna print out is messages and use people as the index, and that would be it. We just take the number of people and look up the appropriate message in the table, and we're done. Now, in this case, clearly, we wanna be able to handle this fire code issue because, well, I mean, that message implies that if you pass in eight, nine, 20, 5,000, whatever, we have a big number, we wanna be able to print out that error message. So I am gonna change this up just a little bit and we're just gonna say this. We're gonna say if the people is greater than um, messages minus one, then we're gonna print F. Let's do messages, no messages minus one. Okay, so if you ever go over, then we're gonna do that. Else we're just gonna do what we did before. So we do have one if else here. The if just exists to handle the case where you give me something that doesn't fall within my table and then everything else just gets passed right to the table. And so yeah, so we're not completely free of if else statements, but the main point here is that using a lookup table gave us simpler, smaller code, code that's easier to update and code that's most certainly going to run faster. Now let's just make sure it works. Let's compile it and let's run it. And you can see that it does still work. So, so we didn't break anything great and our code is much smaller. Just clean up my white space here a little bit. And just to show you the improvement from another angle, I wanna jump over to the Compiler Explorer on godbolt.org. It's a great tool, by the way, if you're interested in seeing what your compiler is producing or you wanna compare different compilers and what they produce. But so if we come over here, I put my original function into godbolt.org. And so we can see the assembly that gets produced over here. So you can see it's going basically the function starts in line 13 and goes to line 40. And if we jump over and we look at our new lookup table version, you can see that now the function is much, much smaller. It's basically generating a total of seven lines of code, of assembly code that is, which is a lot different than the 27 lines of assembly code that we saw before over here. 
So that's a considerable difference, and it's going to make a difference when it's time to run it. Now, lookup tables aren't going to be your solution for everything, but they do show up in a lot of different places. People use them for generating messages like we're doing right here. We use them for encoding state machines. Sometimes people use them for mathematical computations like trigonometric functions, which would otherwise be a lot slower, but you can speed them up quite a bit by using a lookup table. And they're used in a lot of different data structures like tries, but new programmers often aren't aware of lookup tables. They're not used to thinking that way. They've been taught if else. And so that's what they're, that's where their brain is at. And so they often miss this opportunity to make their code better. Also, because I just mentioned tries, a lot of you have reached out asking if I would do a video about tries and good news, there is a video, actually it might be a series of two videos coming about tries and that will be coming out in the next few weeks. So stay tuned, make sure to subscribe if you don't wanna miss those videos like this video if it was useful. Support the channel in various ways if you like what you're seeing here. And until next time, I'll see you later.